that's called by his name, washed by his blood, separated from the world. He's coming back for a holy bride the, without spot and a wrinkle. Amen. And I want to be a part of it. I pray, I pray that these lessons will do to me more than I even hope that they do to you. I want my mind to be holy. Romans chapter number 1, it's, it's, if I can, if I can at all, I want to tie together the link between these passages of Scripture and the world in which we live. But what these Scriptures do is they give us a link between the mind being off. And I wrote some notes down yesterday, yesterday evening. Um, I guess I need to just say it like this. I, I, there's no more dangerous place to be than to think you're all right when you're not. These scriptures give us the link between the mind being off and by virtue of that we will be led to a place where it is impossible Notice I said impossible to think or live godly anymore. There's a journey that this scripture takes us on that can be quite frightening. Especially when it's so plainly demonstrated in our present world. Verse number 20 of Romans chapter 1 says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You notice I have a, verse number 20, a lack of viable excuse for unbelief. The invisible things... What are the invisible things? The invisible things are the work of the Lord. What is visible is what happens after He gets through working. But we don't see Him work, in fact, Brother David. And the Bible will teach you to be patient and have faith that the work of the Lord and He which hath begun a good work in you will complete it or perfect it. The, the work of the Lord is invisible. We've got to keep believing that He is working. But the invisible work... God help me, I could preach. Man, I love this stuff so much. They are clearly seen and understood by all creation. Now, what, if you just read that in a cursory glance, you think, boy, there's, there's more people around that don't believe in God than they are that do anymore, or that's the way that it seems. I will tell you, that ain't true. There's still more people that believe in the Lord than they are that don't. But the media and the world system would like to make us think that there's not many people that believe like this anymore. Not many people believe in the Lord anymore, but there's more than you think. Amen. All creation knows there's a God. How is it? Because nobody... Nobody walking the face of this earth, no mountain, no hill, no stream, no lion, no tiger, no bird, no spider, no ant, no mouse, no bacteria, no algae, no nothing exists on its own. We have to all acknowledge we came from somewhere where we had no control over it. The little baby born to a crack mama, he didn't choose to be born that way. Okay, you didn't pick your parents. I know Hollywood would like to make us think that sometimes, Brother Larry, but everybody exists because somebody wanted you here. You didn't do this all on your own. That, that in itself acknowledges there's a power bigger than me. I had nothing to do with myself coming into this world. I owe my existence to somebody. All creation recognizes that they did not make themselves. 
Then the Bible says, even unto His eternal power and Godhead, which is His deity and His divine nature, so that they are without excuse. Listen to me tonight. Any theory, any idea, any class you might take that, that tries to do anything as to the existence of man other than that God made us is destined for the trash heap of disproven because God made everything. God made everything. Now you got to guess, brass, behold of this, and you got to believe it. And I don't know how it happened, Brother David. I don't know how many days it actually happened on. The sun didn't even start coming up till about the third day. I don't know how it all happened. But, Brother Terry, I believe it happened the way the Bible says that it happened. Okay? And if you don't believe that, that's the starting point for everybody. Because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him, because he that cometh to God must believe that He is. That is the base foundation of any belief, and that's where we started at, is existence. The only true excuse... The only true thing that might excuse anybody is unbelief. And it's not even a real excuse, but it is a ticket for a perilous journey. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Because that, when they knew God. What does it mean what he's talking about here? What's, what's that meaning? Who are we talking about? Oh, okay. Read, read, somebody read that for me. Because, because that, comma. When they knew God. When they knew God. God. Who are we talking about here? A people that used to know God, but no longer do know God. Do you see that? Because that when they knew God, which in one manner of speaking has been the entire world because the verse 20 tells us that everybody, nobody starts out not believing in God. Nobody starts out. Every baby in the entire world starts out trusting in somebody else. Because that. They don't have any excuse, okay? Okay. That they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. Okay? An indifference toward God. They don't worship Him anymore. Boy, I hear the crickets chirping tonight. Because when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. The danger of knowing God and failing to acknowledge Him as God leads to an empty, self-serving mindset which then leads to a confused or a darkened heart. Agenda, when, it, when it's manifested in a lack of worship, when I don't worship anymore, when I don't have anything good to say about the Lord anymore, when they sing the songs of Zion and they don't mean anything to me anymore, and I'm ready just to hurry up and get home and get out of it. A general attitude of unthankfulness. God have mercy. Our entire world is filled with unthankfulness. They're filled with a sense of entitlement that they deserve everything that somebody gives to them. So many times, people you be in a restaurant and the poor little gal will come and bring like 35 people's food to them and there will be two people that say thank you now I know that I, I feel like I'm starting to meddle just a little bit instead of teach uh, but we've got to wake up and realize uh, that we can find ourselves in this same place uh, just cause you're not a pervert uh, and just cause you're not a sexual deviant uh, and just because you're not a murderer, liar, a whoremonger, a rapist uh, does not mean that your mind can't be jacked up still Amen. 
leads to vain thoughts. Vain in their imaginations became... God help me, Jesus. I'm going to teach this tonight. And I ain't hungry right now, but I'm liable to teach it until I get hungry. Okay? But I'm going to share it with you, and you're going to be able to see our world in these scriptures. And you're going to be able to acknowledge and recognize, I don't want to be like that, because I don't want to end up like that. There's only one place that you can go when your mind gets off track. And that's the place the Lord is telling us they're going right here. They became vain. You understand that this is not a Shazam moment. This is not an abracadabra and a puff of smoke. And, they became, and, and, and they're like this. But they became empty, vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. That word darkened simply means confused. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. It's a common manifestation as you see in your papers. A profession of worldly wisdom. We have been liberated. We have become more intelligent. We realize that, that I, I am the source of my own happiness. And I am the source of my own success. And, and I owe everything to myself. And, and I owe everything to, to uh, the, 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 the ability that I have and the talent that I have. Uh, it's a profession of, of I'm getting smarter. And we live in the most technologically advanced age that the world has ever known. Uh, at least according to our history books and according to what we know. But in reality the Bible says uh, they became fools what does that mean professing themselves to be wise they became fools very simple they fell in love with themselves they fell in love with their own abilities. They fell in love with their own talents. They fell in love with their own idea of right and wrong. They fell in love with it in a nutshell with what they want to do. And they became fools. Think about it just for a minute. Think about it. God help me. I don't know if I'm out on the World Wide Web tonight or not, but you think about it just for a minute. Oh, Lord, man. I, I just... Y'all gonna have to hang with me just a little bit. You think right now, okay, how many people have been to Walmart in the last three months? Is there anybody that ain't been to Walmart in the last three months in this church? I hadn't. You go through the checkout line at Walmart. And you look at the front of the Inquirer and the Star and some more magazines they've come out with. I can't remember the name of all of them. And the week after that they have some kind of awards at MTV or something like that, you will see somebody on the front of one of those magazines that is the coolest person in the world today. And Brother Billy, they are dressed like, painted like, Poked and prodded like something that was a cartoon character when you and I were young. It's as outlandish as you can get. It's as goofy as you can get. When some old gal sticking her tongue out about that far is her signature moment. And when I was coming up and you did that, they put you on another bus and didn't let you go to school with everybody else. <laughs> Now listen to me now. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here right now. They profess themselves to be wise, to be cool, to be a magnet for attraction. And people will dress like them. People will fix their hair like them. People will make their face like them. And they're retarded. 
it's a, I, I preached a message about it one time. And I asked several people that they, did they remember the story. And, and unfortunately, there weren't very many remembered it. Uh, but uh, uh, I remember reading it when I was a little fella. And, 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 and uh, you know, Brother Cody, I used to read everything. Back of a cereal box was good reading material. You know, don't be pouring you an extra bowl while I'm in the middle of reading, you know, about something. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And uh, I read everything. And, and there was a fable about this emperor who thought he was smarter and, 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 uh, and more intelligent and, and had more than anybody in anything. And, and these, these tailors convinced him that they, that they had some material that the, he was the only person in the world that could, was smart enough to see it. So long story short is they dressed him up in nothing. That's called naked. <laughs> And he parades down the middle of the street with his head up in the air, pompous and arrogant and an attitude, and them convincing him that he's clothed. But the only problem is, all the other peons in the world are not intelligent, smart, bright, uh, 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 elevated enough to be able to know it. Now you've got to understand what I'm trying to say tonight is we've got a world that the most popular, the most cool, thousands, thousands of people. And, and, and please, I mean no disrespect. I don't know the old boy. And, and I heard that he even goes to church and stuff. Uh, but, but the one that the girls slobber over themselves and they cry over looks like he's about 13 years old. And he, you know, he, he's skinny as a, as a broomstick. And, and he, I, I don't know if he can sing. I don't even know if he's got, a, I don't know any of his songs. He wears his hair all floppy and stuff and shakes his head and makes it flop over. And, and, and he, he put tattoos and stuff all over him, you know, uh, just because it was cool. I felt sorry for him. He's goofy looking. But, but people will fall out and pass out from heart attacks. Now listen to me, I know I'm being a little bit facetious, but you got to be feeling me. Look where we are. What You would get beat up when I was a kid for looking like that. No, and I'm not saying that to beat folks up was a good thing. But what I'm saying is the world is getting more and more and more and more outlandish. Come on now. I saw something the other day talking about, and I know, God have mercy, someday I'm probably going to get somebody come in here and arrest me or something for some kind of goofy thing I said that got put out on the internet. But Brother Terry, I saw it. Uh, you know, this muscled up dude, uh, with, with, you know, he didn't look like that other fella. He looked like a model was supposed to. And he comes sashaying down the middle of that thing with a cotton picking dress on. <laughs> Think about it for a second, Brother Terry. There are people tonight that are spending millions of dollars to defend a man's right to put a skirt on. <laughs> Professing, and they're going to... Oh, I think back to this. A fool that said in his heart, there is no God. Yes, Absolutely. Do you not see professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The entire world is wandering around naked. And because I call somebody on it, I can be sued. I'm belittled. I'm judgmental. I think when they all get by themselves and there ain't no picture taken going on and there ain't nothing that they pull their, she pulls her hair back in a ponytail gets out a washcloth and washes her face off real good puts on a nightgown gets up in the middle of the bed grabs a baby doll and just sits there and bawls and wonders where'd my life go Oh, Lord Jesus. I, I got on my soapbox a little bit and I, got, I chased a few rabbits, but just, just bear with me. So wisdom of the world and those that are still normal 
are the ones the world thinks is a fool. Look here in verse 23. It's a comment. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now, you know what he's talking about there. You, you all don't see it quite so much here, but, but still, we used to go to a Chinese restaurant down in Louisiana that they had a, a big fat Buddha set up in their restaurant. And you go to Africa and you go to some of these other places and you see all these gods and all these idols. And what they did is they, is they took just... just Pulled it out of the air somewhere, Brother McKinney. And somebody went to the woods one day and got them out a knife and they found them a stump and, and they made it look like an elephant. And then they set it up in the middle of the camp and everybody started milling around it. And somebody built a fire in the middle. And before you know it, somebody hit a couple of beats on the bongo drum and then the entire tribe was falling down and worshiping a stump. They took things. Think, think of the irony. They took things that God made and tried to make gods out of it. Why? Why? I want to discuss this for just a minute. Why did they need to do that? Why was there a need to create a God they could see? Why? Well, you got two answers on your papers. A faith failure. How is it a faith failure when I need a God I can see? Because I don't believe in the one I can't see no more. And then Brother, Brother Billy, they had an insatiable desire, and we still battle it in our world today. They had an insatiable desire to be like everybody else. Remember when the children of Israel came to Samuel and said, we want a king. And they had one reason for it. Because everybody else had a king. They did. They did too. Oh, man. Boy, I could do some preaching right now, Brother David. They had a king. But you only see him through eyes of faith. And you only see the evidence of what he's done. He brought them out of Egypt. He gave them a law on top of the mountain. He fed a man in the wilderness. He fed them quails. He, he gave them water out of a rock. And, and they saw the ground open up and swallow rebellious people. And, and they saw the, the Lord bless them in, in any multitude of ways. But they weren't happy. Think about that just for a minute. The people of God, close to God. Do you, do you know, and I'm going to preach about this someday, but you know why that, that the Bible talks so much about them building idols in high places? Because, Brother David, they had it in their mind that they were getting closer to God. That it was a geographic thing. Are you feeling me right now? They had to make this relationship with God something they could actually touch. One time the Lord even asked them, He said, why in the world are you worshiping that God? Last week, me and you just whooped them. Hang with me, hang with me just a little bit. They created gods out of things that, that God had made, animals and fish and, and half man and half, half donkey or whatever. And, and uh, then they, they, it was because their faith was failing and because they, they needed something. It, it didn't matter that every time you read it throughout the Bible, every time that they stayed faithful to God and they stayed close to God, they had plenty of rain. And if they didn't have any rain, the birds brought them food and... and manna fell out of the sky and, and they had everything they needed when they stayed close to God. The only time they began to be in want and need something else was when they got away from Him. Verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves.
What do you think gave them up means? You want to do things your own way? You want to be set free to live like you want to live? One place in the book of Isaiah, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it right now. We may get into it later. But they said we want to wear our own apparel. We want to eat our own bread. We want to do things our own way. We want to have our own gods. We want to do everything our own way. And finally, God said, okay. One commentary I read said that might could be described as God throwing up his hands and saying, you want it your way? I'll let you have it your way. But look what happens. God gave them up to uncleanness. I'm going to meddle a little bit, okay? Now, I'm not going to talk nasty, honey and mama, so don't worry about it. Okay, I'm going to give a... I think that might have been last Wednesday or Sunday or one of those times that I nearly threw them both into heart attack. I can't do that. Y'all going to ladies' conference tomorrow. Wherefore, God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts. Have you ever... Well, let me get a little philosophical right now. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking right now. But have you ever heard, how, how many of you know, how many of you have ever worked in a factory? Alright, you, maybe in your jobs too, I don't know. But you will hear some of the most God awful things people talk about in the workplace. Maybe it's not in the factory only. You know, maybe it's first one place then another. The, maybe you'll see something in the, in the, in the news. Maybe you'll, 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 you'll see something come across Facebook and, and it is uh, like, like, think about it just for a minute. I've got to try to paint a picture and I, I really, I don't really want to say things, you know, that's going through my mind right now. But, but when, when, you, when you find out, you know, I mean, there's a reason why that the Bible talks about it being a sin to have sexual relations with an animal. Okay? But do you ever hear about that stuff sometimes and wonder who in the world came up with such as that? What's got to be wrong with somebody for that to even enter into their mind? The Bible tells right here why. They said, we want to do it our way. And when you do not, God help me, I may be jumping ahead of myself just a little bit, but when you do not have God in your life to reign you in, when you do not have the Spirit of God to reign you in, your mind will go places and to go to crazy spots. The lust, think about that just for a minute. He gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts. That sick, crazy, perverted, nasty stuff came out of a human being that no longer had God to regulate their behavior. Now we like to say it came from the devil. Wherefore God also gave them, He threw up their hands and gave them over to uncleanness through the lust. God help me. Don't. Am I being too plain and stuff? It came from their heart. Do you see that in the Bible? Do you see that in the Bible? When you tell God, I don't want you. In 1968, we begin to start telling God, we don't want you in the school. Right. You know, they let one irritating woman 
One. Boy, I just got goosebumps on my knees. That's what happens when one irritating, antagonizing woman who somebody got so sick and tired of her that she's disappeared. And she caused the entire nation to say the kids can't pray in school no more. Now even though it became a law back then, Brother David, we prayed in school when I was a little fella. It hadn't, even though it was a law, people still did it. 